If your life was a movie and it started now, forget about whatever financial disasters you've had, personal failures, relationship failures. What would the hero of your life's movie do right now? Do that. Do those things. We define ourselves far too often by our past failures. We look at our past and we say, well, that's me. That's not you. You are this person right now. You're the person who's learned from those failures. And you can choose to be the hero of your own movie right now. Write down your goals. Write down things you want to improve. Write down things you won't tolerate from yourself. Write down things that you've done in the past that you never want to see yourself do again. And go forth from here as the hero of your own movie. Build momentum. Build confidence and momentum with each good decision that you make from here on out. You can do it. Anyone can do it. We live in unique times. We live in one of the rarest times in human history where you can choose almost all the input that comes your way. Whether it's the movies that you watch, the books you read, the podcasts you listen to, you can choose to be inspired. Do that. Do that. And be the hero of your own movie. It's good to treat other people the way you would like to be treated yourself. It's like a golden rule, and there's a reason for it. And that reason is that we're connected in some strange way that we don't totally understand. And unless you are good to other people around you, unless you're kind and friendly and warm and loving, you're not going to enjoy this life. You're just not. You're going to be problems everywhere you go. You're going to have problems everywhere you go. you got to figure out a way to enjoy this life. It's not because of Jesus. It's not because of Moses. It's not because of anybody that may or may not have ever existed. It's because that's how you fit in better in the world. That's how you stay positive. And it doesn't have to be some shit that was written 5,000 years ago on and animal skins that doesn't have to be the golden rule because it's old you know that's dumb we need to figure out like now today what what is you know the best way to live your life what is the you know there, there's got to be ways you can be putting forward the most positive energy I mean we know objectively what's causing pollution we know objectively what's causing birth defects and you know and we're taking in too much chemicals and not enough vitamins we know objectively all this stuff we know how to organize our world and yet we don't do it we know how to organize our health and yet very few people do it we know all these things the right path to like being like a happy healthy person is to do all the shit that we already know you're supposed to do take care of your body take care of your health take care of your mind your stress meditate be kind to people we all know that I mean you ask anybody they know how to get by and to be the the the, the most evolved version of you that you can be I mean it's not like a, a magical checklist if you talk to people about it you said okay here you, you got a person you want to improve them what are the things that you're gonna do to them Okay, well, if I was a life coach, the first thing I would say is this guy's got to get on a diet that makes him healthy. I don't mean a diet just to lose weight. I mean just healthy foods in your body, v many, many vegetables, vegetables, a lot of good, good quality protein, a lot of water, stop the sodas, stop the bullshit. Start working out your body and get a better sense of like how this machine feels when it's moving, it's flowing better, there's less tension in it, your mind feels like relaxed and, and you enjoy every single moment of the day better. Step one, everybody knows that step, right? What's step two? Be cool to people. Be nice to as many people as you can. Smile at as many people as you can. Have them smile back at you. Tip well when you go to restaurants. Just do the most you can. Be as nice as you can, you know, and just still manage to not have people walk all over you. Just get through this life as nice as you can what else do what you want to do with your life right don't don't go be doing something you don't enjoy don't do something that's don't get locked into you know a, a car that you can't afford and doing something crazy because you need the money don't don't do that do what you want to do do what the f is it that you really want to do because if someone else is doing it you can do it you know I mean everybody makes their own path through this world but a lot of people don't follow the path that they really f feel pulled to you know, just for whatever reason, they got negative programming. You know, when they were kids, someone told them they couldn't do it or told them to take the shortcut or, or take the, uh, the, the sure route. That's a, a sad thing, man, when you talk to dudes, especially like talented dudes, and they don't follow up with what they want to do, you know? There's a, a bunch of people that will say, yeah, well, I have a family, so, you know, it's a great idea for you to just go out there and go crazy. I have people to support. You need to listen. Stop saying that. Stop saying any of those things. Every single person who has ever done anything worthwhile or exceptional or difficult or extraordinary, anyone, whether it's great artists or authors or mathematicians or whatever the f it is, 
everyone encounters difficulties. There is no easy road. It does not exist. It is impossible. Everyone has issues. If you have time to pursue a hobby, if you have time to do anything in your life, you can better yourself. And here's one way you never better yourself. When you come up with excuses for why other people are successful and you're not, that sh is f dangerous. When you give yourself an escape, yeah, well, that's easy for you to say, you know, you do this, you do this, you do this. Trust me, everybody has a hard road. I wanted to jump out a window several times during my young life. I wanted to jump in front of a f train, just end it because it's too much pressure. Not really. But you know what I'm saying, theoretically. We all go through hard times. We all go through depression. We all do go through doubt and, and then moments in your life where it's really f difficult and you're trying to figure out what the f your path is going to be. It's hard as sh**. But Stefan and I were talking about this before the podcast starts that that is what makes you a person. And those difficult moments are what build your character. Show me a great man who's the son of a great man. You know, that's what we're saying. These kids that are born billionaires, you're f you're f you're never going to be a self-made person. You have a backup trust for your backup trust for your trust, and you're f man. I'm fascinated by martial arts. I'm fascinated by comedy. I'm fascinated by many, many different things. I don't understand when people say they're bored. Because if I had the time to live a hundred lives, I'd be speaking different languages, I'd be living in different countries, I would, I would try a, a number of different careers, because I think there's a lot of unbelievably fascinating, puzzling, complex things that you could study in this world. Mm. That's just me and my personality, but that's a personality also that I've cultivated over years of challenges. Were you challenges. like that as a kid, too? Well, I was involved in martial arts very early, yeah. and I think that is one of the things that motivated me to uh, explore difficult tasks because through difficult tasks you learn an incredible amount about yourself and uh, you through through the fire of competition you get to understand you get to understand uh, motivation you get to understand the resistance that you have inside your mind to doing hard work mm. you get to understand the rewards of discipline like you don't truly appreciate relaxation unless you've worked hard mm. and that is the yin and the yang of life and I've said this to to the point of people getting sick of it, but one of the worst decisions a man can make, I can only speak for men, obviously, um, is to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. I, d I don't think you should try to be comfortable. I think what you should try to do is try to earn comfort. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you can get a day off where you, you, you've worked hard and you've you know, accomplished goals, that day off will be so sweet. When I work hard and I sit in front of the TV, I enjoy the shit out of it. I put my feet up. I have a nice drink. You know, I, I enjoy you my free time. one of those chairs time. that nids your back or something I like that? I do have one of those. Do you really? Those are great. They're yeah. great, right? Yeah. I don't use it that much, though. Honestly, I'm more of a workaholic than I should be, probably. If, if the, the balance was I probably should relax more than I do, but I never feel like I earned it. But that's part of the reason why when I do feel like I earned it, I can enjoy it. It's because I am more connected to the idea that I need to to accomplish things. Mm. And, to, and, and it's not, not like for anybody else's benefit other than my own or anybody else's approval other than my own. I just, when I have a task, whether it's uh, I, today I'm going to write a thousand words, you know, or 2,000 or whatever the number is. If I don't do that, I don't, I'm not, I write things down. Like I'll write down a list of things that get accomplished that day. And if I don't accomplish that, I'll get sick. Like I'll, it'll drive me f crazy. If I can't fill out that list, uh, that drives me nuts, you know, but that's what led me to be a championship level martial artist. Mm. That's what led me to achieve. The, it's like that. It's the reinforcement of those goals, like understanding that the, you can achieve those goals, it's going to be difficult, you're going to push through the difficulty, and then you're going to understand what difficulty truly is and how much of it is just mental, how much of it is just in your mind, this adversity to, to uh, difficult task or to struggle. You know, and a lot of people have that. They're scared. They're scared of, of complications. They're scared of, of failure. Failure is a big one that people are afraid of. But failure is one of the most important things you could ever have as far as, like, the motivation to do things differently. Mm. One of the reasons why I think that I'm good at friendships and relationships is because I failed at them in the past. One of the things that I'm good at comedy is because I bombed on stage. One of the reasons why I'm good at work is because I've been a sh worker in the past and I know the, the feeling of failure, the feeling of, uh, of shame, of being like a weak, 
non-motivated, lazy person. That's a weak feeling. It's mm. a, you don't respect yourself. You know, and I have this phrase that I use all the time to people to, to try to motivate people. I say that be the hero in your own movie. Pretend that if mm. your life was a movie and your life started now, what would the hero do? What would the person that you respect do? What would the person that you admire, the person that inspires you, what would they do? Well, do that sh <laughs> And if you do that, you slowly build momentum. You like, today I did what I wanted to do. Today I started a class in yoga. I did this. I did all these things that I was saying I wasn't going to do. And now I feel momentum. And yeah. momentum is a very important point in people's lives. That's why some folks don't like to take days off because they feel like they're losing momentum. And they sort of have to restart the wheel up again after a vacation. You know, and there's a lot of folks that live life on a cushy cloud of marshmallows and bullshit. And then one day something goes wrong. And I mean, that's why s spoiled kids are so sad. Like a spoiled young boy is one of the saddest things ever. A young boy that becomes a man and can't take care of himself. And his dad has to keep on rescuing him. His dad has to keep on bailing him out of situations and giving him money. I've met guys like that. And that is a crippling affliction when they don't have the character themselves to be able to get by in life. They constantly need someone to help them and bail them out. Even as a grown man, I've met guys in their 40s that still need help from their parents. I'm like, what the f***, man? <sighs> You're never going to get it right because somewhere along the line, they didn't face enough of the adversity to realize that there's sometimes you just got to get up and get shit done. There's sometimes we have to f pull yourself up and you have to push forward even if you want to stay in bed. And if you don't do that and you just keep calling on your daddy and your daddy keeps rescuing you, you never develop those tools. You never develop that ability to recognize what you're doing wrong with your life. Because you're, you're soft. You got a cushiony. You got a safety net, a safety net for your safety net. If you had a kid, obviously you do have a kid, but say if you had like a 20 year old and he's just a f doper, where he wake and bakes and doesn't get anything done. He's just always like hanging out with his friends and playing video games and he's just a f loser. Yeah. I, I, I wish there was a way you could show someone like that, like, I know that you're getting some comfort and satisfaction out of just laying around, doing nothing, eating, getting fat, but your life would feel better and richer if you had a goal, you chase that goal, you accomplish some things, and you would get this boost of confidence, you'd get this boost of self-esteem, like whatever it is that you're into doing, maybe you're into drawing comic books, maybe you're into uh, making pottery or sculptures or who but find whatever the f that is and pursue that instead of doing nothing like the people that are doing nothing those are the real people I mean, look doing something might be as simple as like that alex honnold guy he just climbs rocks but he's world-class rock something, climber though. it's something but and it's also a goal of, his, of yeah. his and he's also the best at it right? yes yeah but those those people who smoke pot all day and do it, those are also the guys who hate on Joe Rogan for being in shape. You know what I'm saying, or being disciplined, or get on Kevin Hart's Instagram and hate on him. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't. It's it's their own insecurities. I see what you're saying, but I I would assume they would get motivated by seeing other people do something with their lives. Like that should be motivating, not yeah. But if you grew up, if you grew up with losers and you're around a bunch of people with the attitude, especially if it's in your household. <clears throat> I was very lucky that uh, both my mom and my stepdad, they're not, they're not, they're the least hater people I've ever met in my life. They're just not haters in any way. Like if someone's doing well, they're always like, wow, look at this guy. Or like, wow, look at her. Yeah, or, wow, look great. at him. There was never any hate in my house in terms of uh, other people's success. But if you grew up with a dad and your dad's like, yeah, these, f all these rich assholes, this, f he thinks she's a badass and this you know these people that look at other people's success and instead of saying wow that guy did a lot of work like the way i'm a successful person but the way i look at kevin hart he exhausts me you know or the rock those guys exhaust me i'm like jesus christ like i feel lazy next to those guys like they do so much like those guys are so overbearingly ambitious you know but some people they see that and they compare themselves and they don't like it so they get started getting really shitty. and it's like a natural feeling to try to chip away at that person and the worst people that you know are the people that don't have a good self judge that yeah. everything they do is awesome yeah. the, those <laughs> never grow anywhere right I mean, that's a huge issue with comedy um, when you run into people that have a terrible comedy sets but think they did great like we would always, Greg Fitzsimmons and I would always talk about that with, with like open micers. Like there's people that hear phantom laughs, like they think they're doing great, and they have this delusional self opinion 
where everything they do is awesome and they don't know why they're not successful already. They don't, don't know why they're not famous. And those people, I believe, I mean, in some sort of a weird narcissistic way, you could look at it this way, that those people are there to teach you. This is the consequences of not feeling that awful feeling when you fail. I was talking yeah. to Burr um, a couple weeks ago. He did a set at the Comedy Store and I saw part of it. It was uh, He was killing. And then I ran into him in the hallway and uh, I go, oh man, main room show was great, right? And he goes, yeah, I f***ed up at the end though. I tried to hang in there too long and the last bit bombed. <laughs> like he was just, it was rotten at him that the last bit, like he goes, I f***ing hung in there too long. I should have got off of the bit before that. Yeah. And like, but you know, when I was in there, he was f***ing killing, yeah. you know, but that wasn't in his mind. The yeah. success was not in his mind. This, the, what was like, okay, whatever that happened at the end, don't f do that again right. you know right. but that's why he's bill burr that's yeah. why he's really good when you're alone with your thoughts you get an idea of what your thoughts actually are if you live your life just acting constantly on the momentum of other people's expectations of <sighs> you wanting to be liked by these other people you can run into a trap and you 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 set up a life that you didn't really want you're 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 trapped in this situation where you have a mortgage, you've got credit card bills, you've got student loans you have to pay, you have a bunch of shit going on that you have to continue to feed. And all that, and especially if you have a family and you have to feed them, oh my goodness. Then you're fully locked in, you can't take any chances whatsoever. And oftentimes people make the mistake of getting stuck. And it is just a tactical mistake, just like it would be a mistake if you got stuck on a video game. Just like it would be a mistake if you followed a map incorrectly and you get stuck in the woods. Your life is certainly some sort of a journey. It's certainly some sort of a journey. And we have to all be aware that when we're making journeys, we're not going to always make the right steps. And sometimes you have to back up and try again. And if you're in a position where you can't back up and try again, you've trapped yourself. And the system will set out honeypots for people to get trapped in. The system will set out the ideas of retirement, the ideas of the golden years, providing you benefits, providing you a healthy work environment. Why? Well, because they want people to work for them. They don't want people to realize their own dreams and escape. And those, that's a f***ing pain in the ass. So you got to hire more people and train them. And they want to set it up so that you stick around. You stick around in some sort of an unsatisfying world. It's up to you to see that video game problem, to see that issue as it comes up on the map. And no, no, I think this is a right turn. To see all the problems that could potentially lay in front of you and calculate your your future and then also look around all the people that didn't do it and look at the misery that they're in and learn that you don't want to be like them and then look at the people that are have kind of taken chances and navigated their way what did they do differently than you what 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 objectivity do they have that maybe you lack what insight into their own mistakes are they willing to delve into that you're not that you step back and you go you know i don't don't i just don't want to look at myself that closely but the person who's able to look at themselves the closest is going to get the more rational results. One of the things that's causing this funk that people are in is that we're living our lives, many of us at least, in these very unfulfilling ways where you're going to this office with artificial light and you're doing something you don't want to do all day long and then you get home and you're tired. And on top of that, you're eating shit. You're eating potato chips and you're drinking soda and your body is just like, what in the f*** is this? We're supposed to be out in the fields. We're supposed to be walking up hills. We're supposed to be looking for animals or gathering vegetables. We're supposed to be doing all these things that our body's designed to do. We're supposed to be in nature. Yeah. And nature is like a medicine. Like it literally is a medicine to you. Like okay. people, people that go, you don't have to go hunting. You don't have to go fishing. Just go and hike man just go hike up to the top of a mountain and look out you know there's a reward that you get from that that is intensely like soul filling mm -hmm. there's like something about like when i was in colorado and there was this um this area of boulder where you drive up one of these roads and there was this area where you could park and it was this incredible view man and these people just park and just go out there and just look but you get there and you park and you go F because you would see, you're, you're literally seeing the Continental Divide. These snow-capped mountains in July. Yeah. In July, it's covered with snow. Because those mountains don't give it's a fuck. Perspective. One thing that we are, we're an animal. But we're also the next stage of animals where we're aware of who we are and we contemplate our existence. And when you contemplate your existence and you're an intelligent life form, you should always be seeking to improve. If you're always seeking to improve, 
the thing that you look at, like what has brought me the most positive results? So it's kindness, it's kindness, friendship, the, the, the connection with human beings on a very positive level where you like build up like a, a trust and you, you have a warmth and friendship and you root for each other and you, you share in each other's bounty and you, you build together. You know, that we all know inherently in our, in our heads that kindness is like one of the best gifts you can bestow another human being, whether it's giving them food when they don't have any, or helping them out, or hooking them up, or doing mm. something to help them, just or being around them and, and, and complimenting them, whatever the f*** it is. We know that inherently that feels great, and we know it. We, yeah. we, we know that that's the next, we have to figure out how to use our resources together so that we can be like that all the time. I think it's always about doing what you actually want to be doing with your life as far as if you have an inner creative expression to get out. And there's a lot of people that always wanted to be singers and they just, for whatever reason, never pursued it. Yeah. So they just sing around their house and they always wonder what could have been if they just tried to be a singer. That's one form of, that, that could bum you out. That's one form of a, a, a roadblock in your life. The, 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 the depressed feeling that you didn't try, that you didn't try to reach your potential. Mm. You didn't go after what is intriguing to you. Like We all have almost like a beacon that pulls us in a certain direction. For some people, it's nursing. For some people, it's construction and architecture. Being a parent for yeah, some people. It, for, some, for us, it was stand-up. Yeah. You know, it's really simple. Yeah. And it's like there, there's, there's a, something, the, the, the happiness that's involved in pursuing your, your inherent desires is unavoidable. I mean, it's not... It's, it's, it's unappreciated. It's underappreciated. People think, well, all you have to do is find a career. Yes, all you have to do is find a career. But I guarantee you there's one out there that you really, really want to do.